All right, action. As a photographer, we always come up against this challenge, shooting portraits of friends or clients who aren't necessarily models. So I'm gonna give you 10 tips today that are gonna help you turn your friends into models. And if you don't have any friends, I feel sorry for you. Tip number one. Pose your model straight and still facing camera. Now, whenever I'm starting off a portrait shoot, I always just get them to look straight down the barrel, standing up straight in a nice still position. I feel like this is just an easy shot to get straight up, just to help you and your talent start to feel comfortable with each other. And then you can move on to some more creative shots. Tip number two, crack a joke. So cracking a joke is just an easy way to relax the tension between the two of you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when you tell someone who's not very experienced in front of the camera to smile, generally speaking, they're gonna do this like bit of an awkward, like, uh, I don't know, type of smile. For me, I find making them laugh or cracking some joke, even if it's dumb and it gets them to laugh, you can capture this beautiful in-between moment from their awkward smile to their big bellow laugh. And that little special moment in between is generally speaking, their most natural smile. Tip number three, create natural movements. Okay, so now we're actually getting into the posing part of the photo shoot. This is where I'll, I'll tell them to do something natural. So for example, you could either get them to push their hand through their hair, flick their hair, turn their head so their hair's flicking, all these different things that you can tell them to do are natural movements to them. And it doesn't feel as clunky or as intimidating looking down the barrel of a camera or, or standing in, an, in a pose that you may feel uncomfortable. We've got to remember, put ourselves in their shoes. How do we feel as photographers standing in front of the camera? I feel like most of us are pretty awkward. I don't mind it myself. <laughs> I feel like most of us are pretty awkward. So have empathy for that. And if you can make them move in a particular way and capture a beautiful moment in between, that's gonna be so special. Tip number four, creating S curves and hard lines. Now hard lines basically give off this sense of power and authority where S curves give off like a sense of elegance and softness in your image. So when you're posing your subjects, think about these two different points. It's still, oh, that's kind of, kind of cool, I like, I like As you can see here, I have Sam posed in a very powerful position as he's deep in thought. And this is due to the straight line coming from his elbow up to his hand that is placed on his chin. Where you can see over here with the two girls, Lauren and Talia, I've eventually got them to be sitting in an S-curve position. It's very flattering and elegant and creates interest in the image. Yeah, the girls. Tip number five, look for flattering poses. Now this is something that takes time and experience. I don't expect you to know how to do this straight away, especially if you're a beginner photographer. It's searching for different poses that your subject actually looks flattering doing. As you can see here with Georgia, I'm telling her to lift her chin up. And in doing this, this is creating a nice hard shadow underneath her chin, elongating her neck, making her look more flattering. I'm also telling her to soften up her cheeks because as she softens up her cheeks, she gets a bit more of a defiant jawline. Things like this are really important in a photo shoot for you to be conscious of and working towards in order to get the best photo for your subject. Tip number six, giving direction and encouragement. Now, I feel like this is a bit of an obvious one, but a lot of us do this behind the camera. We sit behind the camera, we put it up to our eye, and we do not say a word. And this is possibly one of the worst things that you could do in a photo shoot because it just creates this awkwardness between you and your subject. Get in the habit of constantly saying, yes, you look great, this looks beautiful, it looks amazing, or if they're a guy, you could be like, this is an awesome shot, this is a sick shot. You'll genuinely hear me doing this throughout a photo shoot. That's cool, that's nice. Cute. Yeah, Lauren, this looks cool. This helps so much with the entire process, more than you know. It gives them the confidence and encouragement to continue doing these poses. They know they don't look awkward while they're standing there. Tip number seven, showcase your work with direction. This is something that we all get into bad habits of doing. It's looking at the back of the camera to look at our own work, but we don't turn around and show it to the talent. In doing this, we're not helping them and giving them the tools that they need to be in the right poses for the best creative output. No, we'll kind of... Actually, I'll show you, so then you've got an idea. So, think about if you're learning a new skill. Let's just say you're kicking a ball for the first time. You have your coach who's there verbally explaining it to you. Then his next thing is to do the action himself and demonstrate it to you. The final component is him showcasing how you look and giving you feedback. And you then have the ability to understand what you're doing wrong because you can see it. So get in the habit of showing them 
what they're doing, what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, and just give them general feedback as well. You look great, this is amazing, these photos look beautiful. That feedback is so powerful, like we mentioned earlier. I can't wait to see the photos out of this. Tip number eight, your subject views himself differently. So this is a tricky tip because there's a fine balance here. It's taking feedback from your subject, but also reassuring them that they look good in an image. My resting face looks so mopey. I like that. Like, I like that one there. I think like you have a different opinion when it's your, your own face. Yeah. A few times the guys were a bit concerned about the way they looked when they were looking back at the images. My first thought is always reassure them that this is a true representation of how they look and that it's a beautiful representation of how they look as well. It all comes down to giving them confidence in your work. And if you're confident in your own work and the way that they look behind camera, then they're gonna be more confident in giving you more in front of the camera. All right, so what are we gonna do in black and white? That's the question. What one do you like the most out of those? Like, I like that, like the artsy one. The artsy one? We should do that in black and white, eh? Yeah. Tip number nine, bring your subject in on the decision-making process. So this point is really important for the relationship between you and your friend. It's showing them what you've captured and the different styles that you've captured and asking them the question, which do you prefer? I, my preference is this one here, but their preference may be different. And it helps you both to come up with the best final image. We keep choosing all the hard ones in black and white. <laughs> This isn't one of the tips, but it's nice to highlight is shooting a subject with glasses on. I feel like a lot of our friends wear glasses and I feel like it's pretty relevant to most of us. Whenever you're shooting a subject who's wearing glasses, it's important to keep your light at a 45 degree angle to your camera. This will help with highlights or reflections of the light source in their glass lenses. One of the most important things in portrait photography is the eyes. It tells a story and you have this big reflection shining over the glass element then you're not really gonna see their eyes at all. Tip number 10, the art of the second shot. Now this is a theory I stumbled across a few years back. And basically the whole concept is taking a second shot to the first image that you took. Usually when you go into a photo shoot, you have this key hero image that you wanna capture. And the art of the second shot is once you've captured that key moment that you've envisioned and you've creatively brainstormed, then it's go out, challenge yourself and capture a second one that's just as challenging. So for example, it could be as simple as bringing in a prop or posing your subject in a different way or lighting it differently. These are all ways in which you can get creative with it and capture a second image. And for me personally, most of the time when I do this, I actually end up liking the second image anyway. So guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please hit that little bell right there and let us know what type of videos you wanna hear from us in the future. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week.